Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Issues Program, Breaking Bad post-episode follow-up for the episode titled Rabid Dog. Rabid Dog, what an appropriate title for this episode. Going into this episode, a lot of people were speculating who the Rabid Dog was. Quickly into this episode, we discovered that, of course, the Rabid Dog in this case was was Jesse or, or as I'm joined by oh. my esteemed co-host here, uh, Gotti on these Breaking Bad podcasts, uh, or Hello, sir. is, in fact, we'll get into this more later, is the Rabid Dog Hank? Is Hank? That's what I was wondering. Is Hank biting off his own foot? Is he the pit bull with the attitude that no one wants to live into the condo association because he has pit bull blood? Is he the one? Sorry, personal issue. But I do think that <laughs> it sounded like it. It was. But do I think that? But I do think. Obviously, the obvious choice for Rabid Dog and all the obvious examples in this episode, which there were a lot. This episode was one of the one of the more uh, blunt episodes in some ways, but definitely brought you, flipped you around in a couple of directions. And we'll, we'll, we'll get right into this, this episode. But going in, going in, I had a couple questions going in. What is Hank's plan at this point after the events of the last episode in seeing Walt's Is it clear confession? that Hank has any plan at the end of the, <laughs> or ever did? Right. No, if, oh, I think, I think, I think the biggest problem in, in our headlines here coming up is Hank's a dumbass. I think, I think Hank has, <laughs> a, I think Hank has a plan. I think somewhere Hank has a plan. But I think it's buried behind so much BS that he's he's confused and he's so angry. And ev everyone, I just want to let you know, if any of you have any comments or questions whenever you're listening to this, please text away. Uh, you can text us and we'll read your texts on the air. Or feel free to call and leave a message. Or any other way, you can email me as well. Email me at uh, issuesguy at gmail.com. But you can call or text 781 990 Eight five zero nine seven eight one nine nine zero eight five zero nine, and you can check that out twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Anytime you want to call and get something off your chest about Breaking Bad or anything that's really bothering you, and I'll either address it here or on a different one of my programs. But but back to this, yeah, I don't think I don't think Hank really. I think he has a plan. I think I think buried between his two big mistakes, and we'll talk about it more in depth when we get into talking about the scene. But you're right, Hank. Is letting emotion lead every decision. He's, yes, he could. He's just. He's just a ball of rage. He's a ball of rage, and we see that Marie's a ball of rage too. So he's not getting a lot of support from that end to kind of reel him back. Where Marie could be, could be a little bit more analytical about the situation and realizing that Hank needs to be a little bit. A little bit more careful instead of emotional, and you and, and that's why I think it was was great with the last episode. We kind of or the last couple episodes, we got a feel that Hank maybe uh, got a little less emotional about this, and he was looking at it from more common pers a uh, a a confident and a uh, clear minded perspective. Like when you first went in to go see Jesse in the in the beginning of last week's episode, we we got a feeling like maybe he was starting to learn, but. Mm. Excuse me. In this episode, whatever we thought about that, even towards the beginning of the episode, when we first saw his interactions with Jesse, uh, it seemed like maybe he would uh, would be handling the situation a little bit more intellectually. But it's ended up that his emotions again are leading the day and he's freaking out and he's treating Jesse like a piece of meat, even to the point where Gomez is calling him out in his shit. He's like, I believe this little tweaker. We need to watch out for Walter White. <laughs> You know, we need to believe this little tweaker. But so so that's a good point. Like going into this episode, one could wonder what the hell Hank is going to do. What is he going to learn? Is he going to emotionally break down? Is he going to self-destruct? Also, how speaking of self-destructing, how Jesse at the end, uh, how that would how how that would lead into this episode with the whole situation with the fire. We most we misspoke last week and I misspoke specifically with Jesse and the throwing around the gasoline thing. We led up to talking about yes. the cold open of the beginning of the season and saying, Oh, the house looked like it was burned. I watched that back and it doesn't look like it was burned. It looked like it was trashed or abandoned, but it doesn't can, look burned. Can I can I say that uh Peter Weinstein 
deserves credit for, for noting that. And I said to him, well, you know, it could just be that the gasoline was only enough to burn the surface of stuff or something. Yeah, no, he and, was right. No, I was just, I was just full of crap. No, no, we're I, both, we're both, you know, so. we're both emotionally affected by the episode and, and full of crap yeah. on that one. So feel free to always call us out on our stuff. As we mentioned, a lot of times, unless we're doing this a couple of days, like next week, we will be doing this podcast on Monday or Tuesday because I will be at a concert on Sunday evening. So, um, so we'll have more time to watch the episode a couple of times. But in these immediately afterwards ones, we're we're coming right off from watching the episode. And these in these Breaking Bad episodes, especially this second half of season five, are really densely packed. Especially this episode. I had trouble kind of trying to remember and keep track of everything all the little things that were happening in this episode. And and I'd say this episode compared to the other ones, there is less going on. There's two distinct perspectives that are coming from the first two parts of the episode. We're getting we're getting that uh, kind of a mess with time situation where where we see the events that happen ru- a few minutes after what Jesse did, where it go- goes down the Walt storyline and leading up to a certain point, and then we go back in time to see the Hank and Jesse situation. It's you know, similar to the a million Star Trek plots that you have seen. What are those type of episodes where we mm-hmm. see things from different characters' perspectives? Or uh, I, b- I believe uh, How I Met Your Mother does this a lot, and uh, it's a it's a big time trope of their show. So I, I dig it, and it was uh, it was interesting to see things from that perspective, to see things from the two different sides, and. I- I heard there were rumor there was a lot of rumor on the message boards and in the talk rooms and all those things with you kids out there about uh someone was supposed to die this episode. I think uh I, I don't think anyone died. I think maybe uh maybe maybe uh Jesse's innocence died a little bit in this episode. Uh he drank that uh-huh. he drank that coffee that Marie put some poison in. I think maybe that's the only uh he it's a good thing Jesse never got that coffee. But God bless this episode, and we'll get to that more specific. But God bless this episode to, to you actually know what give us a bothers me. What's that? And I I understand it because anytime you take a character in this show and put them in a different setting, like Hank is a good guy, good upstanding, you know, DEA guy, but he's against Walt, so you don't like him. I can't stand it when people don't like. Jesse, yeah, because <laughs> he's Jesse and he's like our Jesse bitch. Some someone a- someone actually texted me during the show that they've never rooted more for a television character than they're rooting for Jesse Pinkman to survive. It, it, it's interesting. Yeah. Is is that a is that because of the the situation that the character of Jesse Pinkman has gone through, or is it because of the captivating acting performance by Aaron Paul in and uh, cap completely, especially in this episode and last episode, his his performances have been comp- so wide widely ranged. We were talking a little bit at the beginning of the season about how he's catatonic in those first two episodes. He need now that I've seen where that's played out to. He needed to because in these last two episodes, he's the almost the best that Jesse's ever been. Maybe not for comedic one liners, but for for showing showing Aaron's acting ability and showing the range of emotions and how he can go from rage to calm to show the slight tweaks of uh, obviously, you know, tweaking out from doing meth for the first time in a while and his mind's not mm-hmm. quite there at the, at the end with his interactions with Walter. It's, 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 it's pretty crazy. And, uh, and this episode got two very big firsts. One I'm not sure about, and you can all, uh, you, both of them I'm not sure about. I, is this the first time that Jesse's ever referred to to Mr. White as Walter White? I don't, um, I don't know. I, I think it, I'm not sure if it when is. When he was recording that thing and saying, I've known Walter White since. Yeah, I, that, that was the first time yeah, I can well, recall him saying Walter White. I think he may have sarcastically said Walter. Yeah. I feel like he did at some point, but... The other thing is that in that context, it makes sense for him to say Walter White because he's not addressing him; he's referring to his name. I love how he so it doesn't count. I love how initially he first says though, uh, uh, Mr. White, Walter White. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a br- brilliant, brilliant scene. It's, I love the fact that he's called him Mr. White all this time. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's perfect. And then the fact that that carried over to Todd calling him Mr. White and stuff too, like they're like they're in Mr. Carter, Mr. White. <laughs> 
And the in the second well, Todd's Todd, you know, Todd for all he is a deep down psychopathic god knows what is an idiot. Yes, he is an idiot. <laughs> Ren, you are the idiot. And the other uh, interesting thing that happened this week that I and I know Walt's probably referred to them before, but this was the first time in a long time you hear heard Walt make any reference to uh, to uh, Skinny whatever his name is and Pete uh, when he does he doesn't even know their name he goes Skibbity Blue and Zabana right. Doo or whatever their names are and then uh, Walt's got. <laughs> That was awesome. And then he's like, he's like, you mean Skinny Pete and uh, and Badger? And it's like, oh, they're just, uh, they're not doing anything. They're just, we bugged them. They just talked about Babylon Five for something about Babylon Five for three days or something. It just, three days. Well, I forget exactly what the reference was. I might have it written down, but it was, but it was a, uh, it was a Babylon Five reference, and, and which continues the amazing, uh, the amazing Skinny Adventures of Skinny Pete and Badger. As much as we do want to see the Saul uh, spinoff series, a series about these guys falling into money and like the, uh, like the Clampets or something, <laughs> like, like Be- <laughs> Be- Be- Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> with, with, uh, with, with Skinny Pete and Badger, where they, where they finally can put together all their talents you know they write a script i don't know whatever i i think those two guys are those two guys are a hidden resource they, on this show. they buy all the consoles they want <laughs> yeah and just the fact of them the references to babylon 5 and the star trek thing earlier and then other things earlier in the seasons about superheroes and stuff stuff like that okay so let's get into the uh the episode itself so we start off with uh our cold open which is uh, the car pulling up to the white to the Walter White residence, and it is uh, it is Walter, and he sees Saul's car right where we left off. But right away, my first question going in this is this right where we left off? You you kind of knew that the show wasn't going to. And this is probably not that it was a bad cold open. It was probably one of the more predictable cold opens in the show's history because because yeah. once you saw Walter pull up and you you knew. Jesse wasn't going to be in there. You knew they weren't going to do it right there. I don't care how much in a hurry this show is sometimes. And, 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 and that's, that's another thing. Look, do you feel just in general, I, I personally say no to what I'm about to say, but I can't understand. These episodes aren't letting up. There isn't much uh, relaxation in these episodes. They're bam, 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 bam. And it's, it's very much different than the show's been historically. Does that bother you a little bit, the, the rapid pace that they're getting all this stuff out in these last eight le- No, last in episodes? fact, I liked it because I, especially after 5A, I had worried that, you know, 5B was going to be Mad Men. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear and in this, and what, what they did, and what I was going to say as a potential rebuttal to you, if you didn't like it, would be that what I do like about it is I feel like it shows the... I feel it shows the urgency of this situation. The fact that the stakes have been ramped up because right now Walter, well, in the situation yeah. he is now, Walter has two, two dogs and two people that that really want to bring him down. One of which being Hank, who is way too emotional for the situation, and then you have someone like Jesse, who Jesse and Skyler are the only two people in the world that seem to be immune at this point to Walter White's bullshit. And and something that I want to piggyback, I believe it might have been uh, Chris Hardwick that said it, and and I couldn't agree with it more. And it came out again in this episode, and we'll we'll get to this, or I'll make a reference to it later. Is is everybody in the world that Walter can lie to? He cannot lie to Skylar. Skylar no, Sky- no, and she, he it was really it was actually I thought that was poorly done. Yeah, I, in this episode, I, I think I think a I little, didn't think it was well done at all. I think I think in a sense it was done more in the way to to make Skylar seem smarter so they had to have Walt play it so obviously you know play the play the lie so but, or you could argue that Walt's mind is starting to not necessarily think clear because Jesse is that that weird chemical that he can't count on you know he's really he's really scared of the Jesse situation but this is what I was going to say and once we got through it but you you kind of hinted at at, at at a point I made while I was watching the episode, I en- as, as I said, the episode was split into kind of two halves. One half was uh, three halves. One half was uh, Walter's part, then it was Hank and Jesse's part, and then it was the whole section at the end of you know meeting meeting in public and that whole bit. And the first half, 
the Walter, the Walters part, the Walter uh, having to go to Skyler and or and make up an excuse why the house smelled like gasoline and and having to lie to mm-hmm. Junior again and all that shit. Like I, I can't lie. I agree with you. I felt like that was the weakest thing that they've done in a long time, and and maybe because it's up against everything that's been great about this season so far. I don't think it was horrible, but I think it was a little... I don't know if it was supposed to be played for comedy or something in some ways, like just of like, it was obvious that he was lying and we all knew that Skylar knew he was lying and it was just supposed to be the comically how he manipulates Junior again. Well, I mean, even Junior, who's not the, you know, brightest light on the... Oh, bulb. yeah. <laughs> light on the bulb? He's not I don't the, know what that but is. I think, but they think it's accurate. He's not the brightest bulb in the light. <laughs> brightest bulb in the bucket. Definitely not. But, so yeah, no, I agree with you. And, you know, uh, even, even he was like, man, can't you tell the, the troop just once you fainted from, you know, I was like, oh, God, yeah. shoot. So would someone just shoot him? Would someone take <laughs> Junior? Yeah, exactly. Put Junior. I, I don't condone like d- death to anybody, but on characters on a TV show, blah. Junior needs to be put out of his misery because he's like that. He he is the old yeller in the situation. You know, he, we we need to put we need to put Junior down because because Junior, if Junior actually finds out what Walter has been up to, the whole situation, he, I, his head's going to explode like scanners. Seriously, he's gonna he's gonna have a conniption fit. So our cold open, like we said, Walter pulls up to the house, and this whole scene is is him going through the house with a gun, trying to look as tough as possible. Walter never looks right with a gun, and it's played up really perfectly here. Uh, the, it, this scene, and especially the first half of the scene, you, you mentioned this last week, really made me feel, in, in a funny way, I, I didn't hate it, like I said, but there's some moments of Breaking Bad where I start to think of Hal from uh, from Malcolm in the Middle, and this was a little section that I kind of mm-hmm. thought about. Seeing him walk around the house like was a little goofy, and I think it was pl- probably played for that way to show how uncomfortable Walt is in that kind of scenario. He's not really a thug. He's not a guy that shows up at your house with a gun to shoot you or to pr- protect himself even. I mean, that's not that's a rarity for him. And... And I kind of, yeah. I kind of half expected when he came out of the house that, uh, that or in, with the whole gasoline scene, that this is when we were going to get our Carol inter- interaction, our freaking Carol out with a gun or something. But uh, we, but we didn't get that. But what we did get at the end of that, scene... I, I don't think we need to do much more to Carol. I, I know. I, I, I feel like Carol has something horrible going on to her at some point, some point in time. But the interesting sim- sim- symbolic thing I think in that scene, which was, which was, co- which was interesting the interesting symbolic thing that was interesting that was cool was that right at the end of the cold open when walter kind of is distracted for a second when he's standing outside of his house trying to figure out what to do after he realizes jesse isn't there uh skaters roll by and almost knock him over Mm -hmm. and which potentially could be the same skaters that are later squatting in his house so so i thought i thought that was an interesting callback to the opening uh opening of the season so as we mentioned we go, we come back from the commercial break to uh, space mountain no it's not space mountain it is uh the cleaners cleaning the house uh we got huel is on and uh and all saul's guys are all on the hunt for jesse and uh walt's leaving messages for jesse and it's so interesting in the way that Walt's talking to Jesse in that message that he leaves him. He gets so condescending. Uh, why don't you just sleep this off? Is things like that. And then still in that way, no level of responsibility for what he does. No level of responsibility for poisoning Brock. No level of culpability. He knows Jesse has him dead to rights about the situation. He doesn't try to apologize. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you found out about this. It, 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 that's more what he's saying. He's more saying, I'm sorry you found out uh-huh. about this. Sleep it off and get the fuck out of here. You know, like, it's, come on, Walt. Come on, Walt. You need to massage, like, this has been one, this has been one of your biggest mistakes. As much as Hank's fucking it up, Walt leaving you as a loose end, Jesse, is kind of serving to be you uh, a a little pin in Walt's shoe. You know, it's 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 gonna it. This is kind of screwing with him. So, a really cool scene where Walt is trying to get the room cleaned, and the guys are like, "We'd love to take more of your money, but 
best thing you can do here is uh, get new rugs and all this sort of stuff. And Walt's mind's like, yeah, you're right. And then this got a little – this is the part that got convoluted for me because I couldn't tell – tell at first what he was doing and I don't feel like it really served anything to have this be a surprise for the audience in a moment when you find out Walt's lying about what happened with the gas he's like pouring the uh, the gas on his clothes and then pours it in the right, car right when they yeah it yeah. just it seemed just kind of sloppy and like again like like a man that wasn't thinking straight like like a lot of the Eisenberg had sucked out of him and right now he's he, maybe his mind isn't working at that devil level you know, maybe he isn't quite as sharp as he should be but at least that's the vibe i got because it seemed kind of as you mentioned kind of sloppy and and like no way he's gonna get away with this it's just stupid but but uh but so he he skyler and junior come back and we mentioned this earlier he tells the lie about the the situation about that his car burst a pump, burst a fuel pump or something, and he got gasoline all over his clothes, and he trailed the clothes inside. It was like the stupidest thing in the world. And as uh, as Gotti mentioned, uh, Junior calls him out. And he's like, "Why don't you just you stop this? This is bullshit." And or it may have been in a later scene where Junior calls him out on this bullshit. But he, if she she usually sees through the lie. Wall can lie to every everybody, but she can't lie to Skylar. But Skylar just kind of sucks through it because of Walt Junior's there. Walt's really scared about the whole right. thing, and he keeps going on almost like a lying child. And that's where it gets carried away. Instead of just leaving it, he just keeps going on and on and on about it until again Walt Junior cuts him off and is like, "Just say it's about the cancer." And 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 I almost feel like, and I hate to say it like this, a couple moments in this show just seemed like they were sound bites, so that in the previews threw people off about what they were talking about. And we got the junior line there too, with uh, junior, why can't you just tell the truth? That got previewed like it was junior discovering the whole meth thing. But I I almost think that at this point that is like a inside joke in the writers, like junior's never going to find out about it. So, right. So, no, I. You know what. <laughs> It, Hank, Hank, and 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 Walt are going to be like side by side in their graves because you know the joke will be that well that's where they bought them. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 you know there'll be like piles of big blue cotton candy flavored mess in the backyard, exactly. and it'll be like a big sign like New Mexico Mess King Museum. And Junior's still going to be going around on his crutches going, my dad taught chemistry. Yeah, it was good at blackjack. He always won all his money at blackjack. <laughs> he won all his money at blackjack. So, so after that, we go to Saul and Walt <laughs> and Cuddy. And Saul and his guys are looking for Jesse and they can't find it. And uh, the more I think about it at this point in the episode, uh, before, before it was spoiled later on, I, I kind of, at this point, you started to feel, you couldn't help but think that, that Jesse was with Hank. That that was the only possible scenario that could could happen because we saw Hank leave the office and he was probably going to tail Pinkman or going to do something. We you got a feeling that or at least I got a feeling that Jesse was probably with Hank because uh, who else would uh, who be able to talk Jesse out of burning Walt's house down? It would have to be it would have to be somebody. It's not. It couldn't have been anybody else. It, it would. I guess that or I mean maybe it could have been Junior. Maybe it could have been. Skyler, but it made more sense to me that it was uh, that it that it was going to be that it was going to be uh, Hank. But but this is funny and the the funny part of the episode where we hear uh, Wall trying to remember Skinny Pete and uh, Badger's name, and I can't remember if that's the first time he's ever made direct reference to them. And uh, we get, I don't think he, yeah, I don't think he has. No, no, and and we also get the Babylon Five reference, and uh, and we find out that there is no going back on Saul's disappearing guy. But does that mean Walt couldn't use him? Like that? Does that mean Saul can't call that guy again because Jesse screwed him over? Or like that? I wonder about that because does Walt end up using him later? Um. I, the whole you've only got one chance with this guy. He also wants to make some money, so right. That's true. So, uh, it, so it's probably just so a human. Think situation. of it this way: Salt has salt. Salt. Saul has the card, and probably could give it to multiple clients. Right. Right. 
Absolutely. So it's more of a situation like if he wanted to pick up Pinkman again, it wouldn't work out, but he could probably do it for somebody else because he can't control, right. he can't control all those situations. So right here we right. get it. We get the second uh, amazing Saw death reference that's going to be a highly quotable when he does the whole uh, old yeller situation, <laughs> putting down a rabid dog, talking about Jesse, and, uh, and Jesse needs to be put down. Uh, bel- sent to Belize, old, old yeller style, and really funny scene with Walt and Saul. We're getting a lot of them this season uh, with uh, brimming with advice. No, no, no killing Jesse, no killing Hank. Now, the question I have here, and I know we know the end of the episode already, but is Walt going soft or does Ego think he can really save these people or does he really care about, or or we'll, we'll get to this in a second, is what Hank was saying to saying to Jesse true. I, I, I want to hold on that thought because I want to get to that point in the episode and discuss that scene. But okay. but what does what does Walt care about? Does he re, why doesn't he want to I understand why he doesn't want to kill Hank to a certain extent. But cuz he feels like he can outmaneuver him. But with with Jesse Oh, can I can I who the hell Walt and Hank runs around in a house full of gasoline with a gun? <laughs> like cocked and and ready loaded and, and, in in Walt's yeah. in Walt's defense, he didn't realize it was gas. I mean, he should have put the gun away once he realized it was gasoline. Yeah, that 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 is true. It, and and I keep wondering about the uh, we haven't seen another shot of the lottery ticket on the refrigerator too. I'm I I was curious if Walt would have uh, checked that while he was in the house, would but we haven't seen any shot of it, so. It's scaring me a little bit about Walt's money. I think your hypothesis that that money's gone forever might be true, that we'll never see that money again, ever. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I mean, I maybe, think, but maybe just, if, if the situation arises that seems to be happening for the end of this episode about uh, Walt's phone call there at the end, it's safe to assume that Walt's going to need more money because the last of that money he gave to Saul was was what Jesse had with him to pay the guy. So he doesn't have any money left to pay that. So he's either going to have to do this in trade by cooking with uh, Todd and giving him a refresher course about cooking or digging up some money. So one of those two situations needs to happen if Walt really needs needs, uh, Todd's uncles to handle a situation for him. So so after this whole... uh, brimming with advice uh, old yeller situation we go to the hotel where where skylar asks about saul because walt was stupidly meeting saul in the hotel <laughs> the hotel uh parking lot because he because he's just so smart these days <laughs> walt's just walt's just showing that genius eisenberg so well in these last couple episodes in these last couple episodes or in the last episode he did in this episode walt's sh- Jesse is Walt's kryptonite. It, as much as as much as Skyler, he can't lie to. Uh, Jesse is the one that can. He, he's just the person that that Walt can't necessarily plan for because he knows all is his tricks. Is Walt like? Is Walt like Lex Luthor? Yeah, he is. He's he's and, quite, then, and then Ben Affleck is playing. Uh, I love that there was a Hank? beep. I love that there was a beep right there. Yeah, Ben Affleck should play Hank. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, that hurts my head. I know the, the, the whole bunch of this whole thing hurts my head. The, the, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying not to look at Brian Krentz and his Lex Luthor yet, but but I did think about it yeah. a little bit in the last two episodes. But in this episode, Walt's emotions of dealing with Jesse are causing an unstable, un, pardon the pun, an unstable chemical reaction, in uh, and causing <laughs> in thing in causing Walt to to act not like Walt. Because he can't, he doesn't know what Jesse will do. You can't, you can't. If anything's been taught over time, is you can't, you can't judge how crazy a friggin' meth head can get when he's angry. You know, crazy tweakers can do amazing things. The crazy tweaker once lifted up a car and threw it. True story. So we're off to the hotel, and Skylar asks about the whole Saul situation. And this is a, this is when we get. We get the Lady Macbeth scene, basically. We get Skylar asking about Saul, asking about that, telling Walt that you're full of shit. Don't bullshit me. Catches him blatantly in a lie. And then 
and then just pokes him a little bit and and Walt basically tells her the truth that he doesn't tell her what he did to Jesse. He just tells her that I yes I did do it, but I have to talk to him and 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 try to calm him down and that's the proper situation. You see Skylar uh he, he's almost again like he's talking about him like he's a teacher. Jesse's a troubled youth and he just needs to be talked to and reasoned with. You know, and and uh, Skylar pushes about is Jesse dangerous uh, and, and and Walt lies a little bit here. He's like, oh, no, he's not dangerous. He never hurt a fly. And of course, yeah, Jesse's never hurt anybody. And she and she's just hilarious in that scene being like, oh, talk to him. I hope you I hope that's just code. You, you know, I hope what you really mean is uh, is you're going to take him out. It's like Olivia Soprano telling Junior to kill uh, to kill Tony for putting him in putting her in a retirement community. Excuse me, it's a nursing home. But it, it, <laughs> shady finds mom. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a retirement community. But it it seemed like that. It was just this slyly p- made scene. I mean, Sky was just like like she wants to send Jesse to Belize. She she hopes that she she hopes he's talking in euphemisms. Uh, she thinks and he thinks she's drunk. Jesse's not not a rabid dog. He's a person. The second rabid dog reference uh, threat to us. Uh, you we've done that Hank and Marie tape. We've done everything. And in for a di- I even wrote it before she even said it, but in for a dime, in for a dollar. And she's like, we've gone this mm-hmm. far. Why not further? And, and I not all the way. And you know what? She's in some ways, she's absolutely right. And I, I was surprised to get that from her because it was so much more put together than she has been. Yeah. You know, it was like, Finally, somebody in this, you know, kingdom of the insane is making some sense. And I, I think, I think it's come from the Hank, her reaction from Hank finding out was an immediate rage or fear, essentially. But once realizing mm-hmm. what exactly Hank can do and where he is, and then knowing the situation of of my man's smarter in a way, you know, that she knew that Walt basically just outsmarted Hank and they just got away in the situation. She knows she's culpable now. She knows there's no way of getting out of this for her anymore. There's no testifying against Walt and not, you know, if Walt goes down, she's going down. And and she now is, again, she she's read all the facts she's read all the articles of how to properly be a a mob person's wife or a drug dealer's wife and she's now used that information to take the test and she's passing it now and she knows the information so well she can do it do it in the with you know standing on her head she she's so calm about it now and she was she was calm and calculating yep. and, and leading that scene again I'll say it for a third time lady macbeth she was she was she was playing Walt she was a te- she was you need to kill him I mean in Walt's defense right there he wasn't budging he didn't he does not want to kill Jesse and it's obvious again in this scene that he doesn't want it to get to that point and I asked the question again and 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 this time I'm going to answer it a little bit because of the way he talked about him in the scene I I think more than caring and I mentioned this last week I think it has a lot to do with the student thing I think that Jesse in a way is that connection back to the man he was before all of this because he jesse knew him as mr white and knew him as a teacher and he knew even though he didn't have a special relationship with jesse as a student it's still he's still one of his students you know he's a, a, that troubled kid from junior year or from fifth period and i think there's some some kind of feeling about that and there's also i think to go with the dog reference he never felt like Jesse was a rabid dog. He always felt like he knew how to manipulate him just right to calm him down. And he did up until last week, up until the we 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 heard, we talked about this in the first episode. What were the things that we thought that Jesse could find out that would drive him over the edge to go to Hank, to rat on him? And this was one of them, finding about the Brock situation. Yes. And I, I speculated that it was the, the biggest one. Aaron Paul himself said it would probably be the Jane situation. Pro- that would probably be even bigger, but there's no way you can f- ever find out about that. No. There's just no, actually, there's nothing that leads to two it. Of them, 
two of them were asked about which would be – oh, no, that's right. I'm sorry. One of them was the – yes. Yeah, one of them yeah. was, and, Jen, and, uh, and Aaron Paul said that he thought that it would be uh, the Jane situation. But but I hate to disagree with Aaron Paul about Jesse Pinkman, but I happen to think it was the, it'd be this one because this one was the biggest manipulation. And I know that Jane, he really loved Jane and everything like that, but – but I think Jesse would be really pissed off. Don't get me wrong. I think Jesse would be really pissed off about that. But I guess there's nothing – and I guess that would be why that's the biggest one because there's really no way that Jesse could ever find out about that. The manipulation isn't clear. It, I mean it, the story makes sense of her choking on her – you know, choking on her vomit from a – she was a drug addict and they were they were, they were were doped up so high in, in that, that period of time that – that there's no way that Jesse would think Walt was responsible for that. So we go to uh, – yeah. I forgot to mention that in the beginning scene when Walt goes into Saul's car that he sees on his driveway, we see a CD that obviously has uh, some meth or cocaine on it. I, it's unclear what drug was on there, but Jesse was doing some drugs before going in. I I tend to think it might have been coke because – Unless Jesse would just have meth on him, I, I think I, I tend to think it was something that maybe Saul had, and Saul seems to me like someone that might, you know, carry some cocaine in his car. I, I well, don't. There's, there's two other things, right? Um, meth is a bit harder to, you know, kind of prepare to use, and um, the meth that's out there right now. It ain't got nothing on Heisenberg. Yeah, that's dude. that's true. He's probably not doing that low grade. Uh, the, the chlor- like, seriously, the like chlorine. I'm willing to bet because he he still takes pride in what they were able to produce. Yeah, he because he he's, he's probably and he probably prefers it. And he yeah yeah and he it, because it, who knows he might have had some of his own supply hidden, but we do know that he didn't have any more drugs on him because Saul plucked the weed off of him so he needed to somehow get drugs at some point in time so maybe he made a pit stop right. on the way on the way back but i tend to think for some reason i think that was coke because i agree it didn't look like didn't look blue and we know the stuff in the area is still blue even though it's a lesser quality and it did right. and it did uh and you're right because in another point later in the episode we're and, and now we're switched over to the jesse and hank part of the story uh you're right because Jesse makes mention later in the episode about how he is – he does feel very strongly about the quality level that him and Walt were were able to achieve. He makes mention that again that Walt needed me because I'm the only one that's almost that's almost as good as him cooking. And And you can just see the way he said that, that he still holds pride to what they did. And it's not – it's more – again, it has to do with the children killing and the children fu- – like – if if Walt had handled the situation with with Todd about shooting the kid in, in five one better five, five eight, part A better he would have I think Jesse's plight would have been different I don't think we ever would have got here with Jesse I think Walt needed to send Todd to Belize right there or at least fired him right there I know he couldn't have killed him because. You know, somebody needed to yeah, do someone needed to do something. They did exactly. They needed to, uh, but but I mean, they just went back and forth and back and forth about Uncle this and yeah, and I think staffing that. And, I, I think ultimately it was about it was about Walter not being able to and Mike, neither one of them being able to make a decision together, and that being a problem the relationship from the start. And I think that yeah. that that was because ultimately they should. Jesse was right. They should have got rid of Ricky Hitler right there. You know, they, he should have been. He should have been. I, I still, he, that, was, that was one of my favorite Jesse Jesseisms Jesse of the whole series. <laughs> well, Ricky Hitler, Hitler over, over here <laughs> shot the kid. It would not. It, it was. It, but yeah, I think if if Walt hadn't hurt kids, and that we wouldn't have got here. Cunnilingus and. And and brought us here to this war. Cunnilingus in nursing homes brought us to this war, but to make another Sopranos reference. But what we need, but what we, uh, but yeah, I think I think Walt really oh, screwed yeah, up. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. Walt really screwed up here because be, because he he just needed to handle this Jesse situation a lot better in a couple of moments. He, if he treated Jesse with a little bit more respect, shown a little bit more respect to his relationship with Mike when they first started to become friends, even though Gus was fu- messing with him, it, 
it, there was a couple moments where Walt let his ego get the best of him in this situation with Jesse to let it get to this point, not just those, all those horrible things. He, he might never have had to get to the point to, uh, to poison Brock. Uh, but I understand that at that point, Walt was facing his life because Gus would have killed him. And, and he needed to do something. But you, you don't fuck with Pinkman and kids. That's all I'm saying. You know Jesse's like that with kids. You don't, there could have been another way. There had to be another way. So, yeah, we go over to Jesse and we see him sniffing something off the CD. And we go back in time to the events of right before, uh, right before Walt showed up to the house. And Jesse is crazy gasoline, Tasmanian devil. And he goes to light up the room and Hank steps in and stops him with a gun. He's with gonna, a gun. Yeah, he's going to stop him from lighting the house on fire by shooting him with a gun that's going to light the house on fire. Uh, you know what, what, what guns do? Yeah, they they a, uh, ignite yeah, the, flammable. Yeah, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know we're breaking some news here, but, but, but we learned with some deeper research that Gotti just did in his brain. Yes. We realized yes. that guns, in fact, cause... Because well, because combu- <laughs> com- 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 is is the word combustion? The, or no, not combustion. Is that no, yeah? No, no, no. Um, com- yeah, yeah. No, no. I think it is. Yeah, which could cause a, sp- a spark, which causes a fire to happen, which means Hank was. Given I think a- the spark causes the combustion, which. Yeah. When Die Hard when Die Hard gets something right that you don't get right, there's a problem here, Breaking Bad. With a little bit in this moment where we, <laughs> we where it's like John McClane's like, Don't shoot in here, this room's full of gasoline or something. You know, we we've seen this in cheesy action movies. We know this is truth. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, I mean you've seen it in like, you know, it must have been in episodes of of Law and Order or something, yeah, too. Or, like, or even, I, I want to say it's even been on a show like Sons of Anarchy that don't, that does not really care about reality in some situations. That, that's, that's playing a comic book type storyline. I've seen this whole, don't shoot. We have got, ga- this place is gasoline on the floor or something. You know, there's gasoline in here. Don't shoot. Which, which did, I did. I put a dot, 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 question mark. Hank tries to stop him with a gun. So, so, but, but, anyways, it, he doesn't really need to stop him. Jesse, Jesse's more. I'm glad it wasn't just me. Yeah, no, it wasn't just you. So he tell he yells, uh, tells Hank that uh, Walt poisoned a little kid as a move. Uh, blah blah blah, and starts screaming all these things. And Hank, what seems like we we still have calm, reasonable, intelligent ish Hank says, let's let's work together. This was a really intense moment. I feel like this point, though, even though that was a little silly. Uh, th- this point in the episode is when the episode picked up. Uh, like I mentioned before, the first half was a little I actually, little slow. you know, I, I, it was silly, but I don't think you could do it any way but silly. No. Because the only thing that Hank could do in that situation was look a little stupid by going, so we, let's just work together. And, yeah. And, and, and know all the backstory between the two of them. And he, it's the only way that he could... It's, even begin to try to fix that. It just seemed a little like I I I, I hear and I agree. I, that couldn't have been done any other way. It needed to transition like that and just be a be an offer. But it felt a little bit like, oh, why don't you join my team, Robin? You know, or there was like a there was it like was, a, yes, a, no, it did a, absolutely. There was a moment of like, and even that whole section of leading up with like suddenly we were in a uh, and I feel like it was almost done on purpose. Suddenly we were in a uh, Hill Street Blues comedy te- television show with the the Gomez the Gomez uh, Jesse. Jesse Hank Marie mm-hmm. Marie story. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Hill Street Blues yeah. with, with a comic tone. Hill Street Blues. I'll uh, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll heat up some lasagna. Okay, you know, like good mor good morning, lady. Uh, do you like some coffee? I'll have it black, white. Uh, okay, da, 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 you know, have it black. It was just sort of like a little. Don't go in the bedroom, honey. We've got a guest. Da, da, da. There's a pink. <laughs> there's a pinkman in the bedroom. It was, it was a little. It was a little bit. I love Lucy. Yeah, it was. It, but to, I mean, to be honest. But but I found it funny and kitschy because I feel like it was played again for a little bit of humor in that situation because the show always does have that the awkward kind of comedy to it, mm-hmm. and, and I feel like in a way that and that they can't. If they played all this stuff completely serious, it would be 
dry and you'd want to kill yourself at the end of the episode. It it made it it was it was humorous and funny Jesse was in all his glory in, in this whole section. Now we go to Jesse, like we said, doing the meth, uh breaks him up. Jesse agrees to work with Hank. Hank and Jesse in a car. Never thought we'd see this. Uh Hank straps him in like a daddy strapping a kid into the car. And yeah. and right at this point again I was like, oh wow, Hank's actually doing this well. You know, he he's gonna show him love. He's gonna show him affection and Jesse will you know, work with them. And, and can Jesse get away without this dad stuff? Nope. And, uh, and they, uh, and we, we found out that Hank was following Saul, uh, and he was going to take him to the DEA downtown. And then we, we kind of, that scene leads off with Jesse being like, Oh great. That's a smart idea, which we get a feeling like that's not what's going to happen. Hank's not going to go to the DEA, but I guess he does. We just don't see that scene. I guess they probably cut it for time that we get a scene of Hank going into the DEA and going in to talk to Gomez and telling him what's happening and telling him to come with him. Because instead of that, we just, we just flash to later where Gomez knows about it. And we don't, we don't, that's one of those things I feel like we robbed of a little bit. I guess Gomez isn't an important, enough character but he was important enough to get that scene in the end of last I always felt he was I always felt he was at least as important enough that we we always saw the things that involved Yeah, him. exactly. Where we and I feel like since we got in the last episode the the first half of that where he's yelling at Hank, what's going on in the situation, Hank? What's up? You know, like, you know, you, you, yeah. you're you following Goodman, you're doing this. What what the hell's going on? And I guess ideally in that situation, what we're led to believe, Hank goes, fine, take your men off. And then he goes to follow Goodman. And there he sees Jesse go in. And, and that's how he's tailing Jesse. So that, that makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is that we wouldn't have the moment that Hank tells him what's going on. Tells him that he thinks his brother-in-law is Eisenberg. And just tells him that Walt played you know shows goes gomez the confession videotape i wanted to see someone else's reaction to all that besides people in the family i feel like that was maybe Mm -hmm. something that was cut for time that was probably written that they just felt like oh it's going to be assumed that hank does all that and then gomez goes on his side because of how close they are i mean i feel like that would have been the outcome and i can get why a writer's room would go would go oh we can cut that because everyone's going to assume that but i feel like i personally as a as someone noticed that that was missing that felt it felt like an awkward transition because instead we get what seems to be it was a funny it, 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 it was a, it was a funny scene but i feel like instead of this scene that we get that we should have got that gomez scene we get a a very funny scene but a very useless scene of marie and the shrink talking about how she's full of rage and wants to kill him and looks up poison and then we get a moment of her having sort of a a a Skyler from last season moment where she's overwhelmed by yeah. all the stuff and she repeats poison and she just starts talking that about was, poison and she explains exactly her, what I thought about that. Yeah, and I feel like that's why we got that scene, but I feel it like was, it could have been it could have been it cut was a for Skyler time. rerun and they did, it, it was it actually I I just didn't think much of that scene. Yeah, I mean I feel like I, I feel like I would have rather that's have not the level everybody else is freaking out and running and throwing pe- pots and pans. And Marie's kind of sitting there, you know, calmly feeling sad, talking about yeah, how she's looking up hypothetical po- situation. Yeah, how she's looking up poisons on the internet and how she never would, and and having this like this moral battle with her with her psychiatrist about uh about breaking boundaries of information. It's like why are we wasting time on this, especially with w- the way we come back into the other scene like, where what I was just mentioning. I feel like they could have done this scene, but you cut the scene itself into half, and you just have the section where she says where she's sitting there going uh yes yes and and my, you know someone screwed me over and blah 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 you sort of just the end of it where she just starts repeating poison and he goes are you gonna are we gonna talk about this you know or you know just something and just that was all, all we get uh, okay maybe a little okay. you know just a little bit but i feel like we wasted a lot of time there where we should have again had a go- the gomez Hank relationship interaction about him telling him about Eisenberg and showing him the confessions video because of all the time we've spent in the series with the two of them and developing them as friends. I also thought, I also thought it was odd for us to get that much time with Marie and a character that you know we've only heard about before but never met. Exactly. So like, we we don't have a background with him to know what he's like. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. It uh, and I and I also feel like in that scene we do it's it's all for a couple of the moments of the dialogue for snappy dialogue to be written because they like working with her and they want to give her stuff to say because she does say an awesome line that is good but I, again I feel out of context it doesn't need to be there. Um, I would not hurt him. It just feels good to think about it and. And I agree. I, I, that that's the truth. It it is. I feel like you could have like capped that scene just with that line, and it would have done everything you needed it to do. Mm-hmm. Or had her say something to Hank about, "I was at my shrink today. Things are going horrible. I'm filled with such rage. I want to kill Walt." But I realized that you know, I sh- I just like to say those things. You know, wouldn't you like to kill Walt? Or just something made it made it funnier or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we see that. How uh, was your appointment with Dave? And then go through it. Yeah, and then, yeah. something simple. And, and uh, so, Je- so Jesse's moved in with Hank, and Hank asks Marie to leave. And this is when, again, it feels <laughs> it feels slightly comedic. It's like, dun, 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 we have a problem. Dun, 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 dun. We got a house guest, bitch. You know, it's like, and then we get to, and I half expected him to flash to Jesse in the bedroom playing play, playing uh, Xbox and was smoking, smoking his bong, you know, sitting in the, sitting in the back room go, with Skinny Pete and Badger there going, <laughs> go, you know what, bitch? I think Babylon 5 would kick Deep Space Nine's ass, you know, and having like this, this argument back and forth. And, uh, and that's... It would be even better if it was him and Junior. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hanging out, smoking a, sm- and uh, and what's Junior's friend, Carlos, or what, what's his what's his buddy's name that he's always go- hanging out with? Um, yeah, it's not Carlos. No, it's, it's, uh, so forget. Well, I forget. Uh, anyway, yeah, whatever his name is. So we we go to. Uh, we cut from there to a commercial, and then we're off to the pool with Walt alone. And uh, this was mentioned by the person I was watching it with. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem a little late at night if Walt Jr. is supposed to be asleep. Most hotels don't let you go down their pool after a certain point in time in the evening. Maybe the rules are different no. in Arizona, but no, I don't think so. I, I, I tend to remember that most pools are closed at 10. So maybe it was 9.30, and Walt, since they treat Walt like a baby, maybe Walt has a 9.30, uh, Walt Jr. has a 9.30 bedtime. Who knows? Cause, but we have a scene at the pool with Walt alone, and Walt Jr. approaches, and we are nowhere in for some bullshit. <laughs> uh, Jr. is emotional. It, you see how emotionally messed up he is from Walt's mani- manipulation. But Walt is steadfast about not going anywhere. Is not, the cancer is not beating him. A little lung cancer won't beat me. Um, and again, I asked the question I asked about last week. How bad is the cancer? We get a couple coughs this week and stuff like that. But... Is it closer to what he said? Again, I asked that question again. Is it closer to what he said to Junior? Or is it closer to what he said to Hank? Not I don't, at all clear. I don't. It's not at all clear at all. The more time goes on, the more I, the more Walt's reaction in this episode to Junior. But he could just be bullshitting him. It leads me to believe that it's again. It's closer to what he's saying to Junior that if he continues chemotherapy, they think that they can keep the cancer under control. But obviously, something's going to come up to lead him to have to stop chemotherapy treatments. Is what I'm guessing. But. But who? But who knows? It, it's just as you said. That is still completely unclear. And we have a really emotional scene, or what's supposed to be an emotional scene, between Walter and Walt Jr. about 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 how he's scared about the cancer situation. And as much as I think the scene, ideally, the meaning behind the scene was really, really well done, uh, that he would be emotionally crippled no pun intended emotionally crippled uh, by Walt's manipulation in the last episode about bringing the cancer up and filling him with all those fears about losing Mm -hmm. his dad again I feel like as much as I like R.C. Light or whatever his name is uh I I don't think he quite has the acting chops to pull off what they wanted him to pull off. So again, a junior acting experience comes with him embra- doing a physical embrace of like like or some sort of physical action, and then w- running off scene before you can really get a good look of his face or anticipate any mm-hmm. real emotion coming from him. Because it seemed like the, the the scene was strong for me. I felt like Brian Cranston did really well in the scene. Uh, and, and like how how bad he felt, and the way that Junior reached off and hugged him, I felt like RC did an okay job, as well as his acting ability can lend itself to. I felt like it was probably the best acting that uh, our that uh, Walt Junior's done so far. But that wasn't saying much, and I feel like it 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 again. Uh, uh, added to the stereotype of Walter Jr. getting upset and just running off camera. Because that's basically what he did. He came, and ca- came into the scene, sat down, g- 
got a, got emotional, didn't show emotion, hugged Walter, and left. And it was a little, you know, I don't know. It was a, it, again, it just made. It, it's. I think they painted it, themselves in the corner with that acting, with that with casting choice at the beginning, because because they knew that he would ne- he would ne- be expected to do some serious emotional stuff later on, and I don't think the actor can quite pull it off. I don't know. That's just my perspective. Uh, oh well, but the thing was, in the beginning, he didn't need to, and. A lot of times you get really lucky and they grow into it. No, absolutely. And he didn't. He, 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 you know, he I didn't. mean, there are just a lot of actors who, or, or, or at least grow enough into it. And he just doesn't seem to. No, have, absolutely. You know? like, like, again, for the third Soprano reference of the evening, uh, not necessarily AJ, but uh, Meadow, like at the beginning was really horrible mm-hmm. and kind of hard to watch. But by the end, I enjoyed Meadow's storylines and she captivated a scene. Yeah. She grew into like a, a much prettier person. She was less less hard to look at at the beginning. And uh, and she was... Bill, I, I, have, I have two pieces of information here. Mm-hmm. Lewis. Lewis is the best Lewis. friend. Lewis, thank you. And thank you. I have found basically almost all of the the pool hotel, hotel pools are 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock. And there's the occasional super luxury hotel that has a 24-hour pool. Okay, so I get you, Phil. So, so, so awesome information because that could definitely solve our moderate plot hole here. Because, because earlier in the episode, when Walt Jr. says he's going to wants to go to a hotel, because initially Walt Jr. is like, "Okay, we can go to Hank and Marie's. They got plenty of room." And Walt's like, "No, we can go to a hotel." And Walt Jr. goes, "An expensive hotel." And Walt goes, "Yep." So they could be at an expensive hotel, which expensive hotels have twenty four hour pool service. So, right. So it's reason because because one exists, it's reasonable to assume, assume that. They- there's a second somewhere. That, that's, that, yes, that the writers could do their homework enough to think that expensive high-end pool play, uh, hotels would allow someone like Rich Walter White to to pay for that. Okay, yeah. g- good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, You're welcome. You're welcome. So we, so we see that Walt Jr. obviously is very, very scared of losing, losing his dad and – and all the emotions explode to him leaving, and we'll say what the scene was trying to do. And then we see Walt Senior, Walt uh, Brian Cranston, really showing how again how scared he is, and I and how and how I think a lot of his motivation in the first part of the episode was based on fear, and the fear that again something he said in two episodes ago when he was on the ground after burying the money, he does not want all of this to go for naught. He is really fearful of all of this blowing up and specifically of Jesse. And he tries to call someone. We don't know who he calls. We later find out it, uh, that we'll go in the next scene that we go to that he call actually called Jesse. Uh, we see Jesse at Hank's place and uh, we, we see, we which I thought was going to be a bigger scene, but they didn't force it in there, which I'm glad, but I did kind of want more, more Jesse and Marie interactions because because even the two seconds was just brilliant of her being like, "Would you like some coffee?" You know, I don't know. I just found that awesome <laughs> to, to see those two in the scene together. Uh, and uh, and then Hank doubles it back with like, "Oh, Jesse, you want to you need some coffee?" And he's like, uh, "Ladies, getting me some coffee." And this is where we uh, we we go to what we were talking about before, where Gomez is just sitting in the back of the room. We don't even get an introduction to him in the room. We just when Jesse walks into the room, we see that Hank's setting up a tripod, and we will see in the corner of the room, sitting on the couch, is Steve Gomez for some reason. <laughs> we we don't get any any introduction to him. Instead, we meet we meet Marie's psychiatrist, which is really good, but we don't get any introduction in this scene to a character we've known since the first episode. Uh, but no, we we he's just there, and we are we are to assume that Hank told him everything, and this is not a surprise to him. Because at first I'm like, I'm like, is is Hank hasn't told him anything, and this is all going to be a surprise to him? You know, I, I didn't. I I mean, I knew, like I said, my mind kind of knew, but like, of course that that person because of the way everyone watches TV these days, I I just was like, hey, wait, wait, what about that? Come on, what what, what happened? We needed that scene, but. But, but that being said, we get a very, very, very funny scene of uh, of we hear Walt scared or no of Jesse and Hank's place and Jesse being nervous while Hank and Gomez are telling him to tell his story and tell him the whole tell him like everything that's gone through him and Walter White uh, and in this situation is when Hank starts to show. 
that he isn't he isn't clear thinking. He's starting to get a little emotional. Again, it seems like he has this one track mind of how to get Walter. And he's like, we need a videotape evidence of someone admitting to all the situation to back up my evidence so I can get into a blah, 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 blah. And, and right away, Jesse calls him on this and is like, this isn't going to do anything. You, you don't have any real <laughs> evidence. And Jesse says it a hell of a lot more eloquently than I do. We're, we're, uh, yeah, you know, it's just in this whole situation. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, but, oh, but, but like yeah, the, I, Jesse's got it thought through. Yeah, Jesse's got it thought thought through, and he's just like, "Listen, buddy, you you don't know shit. You you like like he's not he's not going to like he doesn't care about he doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about anything. He's a genius criminal. He he. This is a stupid plan. He's not cooking anymore. You dumbass. You're not going to get him. You know, you he there. You can get right. shit on him. There's nothing on him to get. And and Jesse is and Jesse's right. And and then he records his whole confession. He just sits there and tells the story. Tapes it. And uh, hit Gomez and Hank are outside while Jesse's still inside. And and they talk. And and basically he is. Gomez says to him, "Well, Je- well." Oh no, I forgot. Okay, so he tapes and and Gomez believes the story. But where do we go from here? What where do we go from here to try to get uh, Eisenberg down? And and Walt leaves a message on Jesse's aunt, Jesse's voicemail and, of where he'll be and when. And Hank gets the idea that oh, I'll wire up Jesse and 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 go have him talk to Walt and admit everything so we can get him on tape. And Jesse thinks that this message is so Walt can kill him. We know, we already know that Walt does not want to kill him. Walt legitimately wants to talk to him. He already said no to Skyler. He said no to Saul. He does not want to kill Jesse here. Jesse thinks Walt wants to kill him and thinks that Hank's plant will never work. That Mr. White is too smart. He doesn't care about me. He's going to kill me. He's going to take me out. And this is one of the best sections of this episode. This whole area of this episode is when this episode shines and we're up to the quality that we've gotten all season long. We get an amazing moment where Hank, again... Like, Steph, when we were watching this, starts screaming. He, Hank's shooting himself in the foot right here. Because uh, Jesse's like, Walt doesn't care about me at all. And Hank's like, no, you're wrong. Walt does care about you. He's protected you. This is where we get a little bit of of Jesse's ego. We get Jesse being like, no, no, it's because I'm the second best meth mm-hmm. cook in the world. And he's like, no, no, no. He has an affinity for you. He cares about you. He didn't kill you when it's easy for him to kill you. He could do this. And then we get the amazing line. Yeah, Mr. White's gay for me. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows I it. I love that. I cracked up at that. Yeah, I mean, was like, again, one of the best Jesse lines ever. It's just the way the, of the frustration. Cause he, and again, I'm not going to try to recreate a lot of the lines. That's the only one I wrote down. But there's a, a tons of amazing Jesse one-liners in the scene with him trying I to just, talk to talk to Hank. It, 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 and then it got me thinking about how Jesse isn't gay for me, and then I was sad. Yeah, I understand. I mean, you know, I understand. But but Mr. White is gay for Jesse, and everybody knows he's it. gay for Jesse, and everybody yeah. and everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. <laughs> and, and everybody knows it. And he's convincing Walt. He's convincing Jesse that Walter cares about him. And I, and I thought at the point in time, I thought it was kind of dangerous. And this is where we get the other bit of uh, the sound bite where you get. Mr. White is the devil. He's smarter and he's luckier than you are. And he's one a step, one step ahead. And then he goes that to, whole smarter and luckier. That was like perfect. chilling. Yeah, chilling. And you're like, yeah, he is. And you just realize that Walt has been. He's been lucky you, besides the cancer, you know, and all that. But besides the cancer and all but that. But even then, he was, was lucky. He was yeah. only supposed to live X amount of time Absolutely. and you know he lived and he got, and he got you know, lucky. longer. And and having like even if he didn't want to cook the meth, he could have had the gray and the gray matter people pay for his uh, his treatment too. Like, right. Like no matter Okay, what, the gray matter thing he didn't luck out on in general. No, but, no, no, no. He didn't luck know, out. Still. But but that was one of those situations where where he was so unlucky in that situation, he ma- he made himself lucky. You know, he lost so much in that that he uh, that he needed to that he it needed to even out in the end, and and uh, but yeah. So basically, he's telling him that this plan will never work. But Hank knows that Hank. This is where Hank is somewhat smart. He knows that Jesse is Walt's kryptonite. He knows that Walt's not going to kill him there. He really thinks he has him there, and. Gomez seems to be the only smart one here, looking at it in this perspective, because because when Jesse goes to piss, uh, Gomez is like, maybe the kid's right, and you know, and he'll go to kill him there. And this is when we get see that Hank is truly unhinged. Hank's like, 
I don't care. That piece of shit. You know, when we get to see that Hank, Hank really does have no respect or no care for Jesse. And he's just like, yeah, Jesse's a piece of crap. And if he dies, he dies. And then we get it all on videotape. <laughs> like, he's really excited about it. Like, he's like, ha huh, huh. mm-hmm. We get it all on videotape. And, and stuff like that. You know? You know? But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons that, I mean, you know, the <laughs> and all that. It, 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 he's in no state to be pursuing this case. No, no, he's way too emotional. He should be taken off this case immediately. Gomez should yeah. s- Gomez should step in, and Gomez is becoming a uh, part a partial to this whole situation too by not getting Hank off this situation because he should not. Be- yeah, I think I think Gomez could still step in, but you're right. He's he's at least you know, aiding the situation by not coming in and saying, look, this, you know, you, you gotta stop this. Exactly. To whoever. Exactly. He, he, you know. exactly. He needs to step in this situation and, and stop Hank at a certain point in time when Hank's gone off the deep end. But, and I think at the end when he says, I don't care if Jesse lives or dies and we'll just catch him on videotape and that'll be it. You know, it's Hank does not mm-hmm. understand. But what Hank doesn't understand is Jesse is smart. He doesn't ca- he doesn't care. He would just sacrifice anybody, or he would sacrifice Jesse to get Walt. He's getting sloppy in the, and he's right. Uh, the Walter White is the fucking devil. He and Walter White's Walter White's the Q in this world. You know, like Walter White can do no wrong. He's gonna end up. Uh, I'm still not convinced that Walter White's going to die at the end. I mean, a lot of people think so, but I mean, oh, eventually he's going to die. But I, I, I do think he's going to die of his own accord. I don't. Honestly, everybody who's like, and therefore he has to die. I'm like, you have the storytelling imagination of an eight year old fro- or or a frog or something. Like, yeah, I'm like, I don't, I don't think he, I don't it, think he dies. No, I don't either. And I think that if he, because if he does die, that's a really hard story to make interesting. No, absolutely. Because it's, Whereas it's if too he predictable. If he doesn't die, you can make it fascinating in a thousand ways. No, absolutely. No, I agree. Because it, it'll And be, these people don't make boring stories. Yeah, it's open to so many different possibilities if he does live or if he isn't. isn't is completely responsible for his own demise. And I'm not talking about killing himself. I'm talking yes. about just putting himself in the, in the best position for either success right. or, or going out on his own terms in some ways. So, so then we get a, a really, a really interesting scene with, uh, again, great stuff with Jesse getting wired up. And I kind of thought, and when we were watching, we both thought that when Jesse was like, I got to go piss, I got to, I kind of thought that he was going to run. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that was, that he was done. He was like, I thought so, yeah. Like he was going to jump out of the window or something. Yeah. And just, just get the hell out of there. Get the hell out of Dodge City. Yeah. But no, he, we, yeah. we cut after the commercial break to, uh, in the, in the van where Walter said he was going to meet him. And they're spying on Walter. who's just sitting down doing nothing. Doesn't look like he's there to kill Jesse. And, uh, and, and I love how Walter, when he lies, like, in the message is like, if you just want to show up and shoot me in the head, go for it. You know, who cares? You know, like, it's just that, it's just that, that, that just cocky Walter White shit. You know, like, just, just come on, go ahead. I, you got to think that even though he maybe was there alone, that, that Walter did have some sort of backup plan in that situation. He wasn't going out without, you know, he had some chemical on him that could knock Jesse out or I don't know. He, he. He had some trump card. More fulminated mercury or yeah, something. Yeah, or something. Exactly. He had something on him. Uh, Walter White doesn't go in alone. So uh, so he's Jesse's wired up, and we send Jesse out to talk to talk, uh, to talk to Walter. Jesse goes, sick, desperation sounds coming from the camera. The camera doing that Breaking Bad, cool camera stuff, floating. Uh, you can just tell that Jesse is still high and still having the drug effects. Uh, you don't don't need to say it. You can just tell with the way that they're showing you in the in the age old thing mm-hmm. with cinema show. Don't tell. They're just showing you exactly what's going through Jesse's mind right there. You 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 know, scared, thinking all these thoughts about wanting to bring Walter down, thinking about I don't believe in Hank's plan. I don't think 
I don't think Walt's never going to let a cop beat him. I think that's part of what he's thinking. Walt's never going to let a cop beat him. He knows how these fuckers think. He, he's had his he's had his um, his brother-in-law's number from the beginning. He's never, you know, his brother-in-law can't do this. You know, I, I, I think that Jesse th- Jesse's smart enough, even though he's emotional, he's smart enough to know that Hank's not thinking straight. And even if he was thinking straight, Walt would always get what? the better of him. What other pl- – Mike, he wasn't going to let beat him. Yeah. And Mike was a police officer. There were – there was the – he and he did get beaten by um, – the when the um, – he was stopped for having the cracked windshield. Yeah. No, I forgot about that. But he, he, he yeah, he, he, he did, but he didn't like, he went off on the guy and then he got, you know, pepper sprayed and arrested. And, yeah. but then Hank kind of came in and fixed it, but he is, he, there is a, an ongoing theme there with yeah, Walter he, and that he thinks he can that he thinks he's smarter and can get around the law that he has no problem dealing with that situation. Jesse knows that better than anybody. And and mm-hmm. and, Je- and consider, you know, consider who did know how to do that, which was of course Gus Fring, yep. and consider how different their approaches are. Absolutely. And Gus for whatever it's worth knew how to tie up loose ends. I mean, Gus probably yes. should have taking Walter out at a certain point in time and just called it a day, you know, and I know he probably wanted to, but he shouldn't, he shouldn't have cared too much about, <laughs> about the quality of his <laughs> meth. You know, he probably should have just taken Walter out and it, and cooked with Gale at the 93% and just dealt with it. You know what I mean? You don't, mm-hmm. but, yes. but whatever, uh, that was Fring thinking he could connect with anybody and seeing part of himself and Walter or something, who knows? So, so Jesse, Jesse's walking out, and as we said, floating the drug, like drugged up personality, uh, drugged up style, in, in the camera shot and everything like that. And Jesse sees something afoot, and we don't know if it's really somebody there with Walter at first, but we see that Jesse thinks that Walter has some guy there looking to jump him, and and Jesse just gets this look in his face like he knows something up something's up and that and jesse just takes off and we see jesse running and we see this and running over to a payphone and what i thought at first he was going to call he was going to call walt and to my initial thought was that hank's hank's things backfired hank he's gonna warn walt about hank and and he really believes that Mr. White cared about him. Like, that, I don't know. I know I was wrong, but that was my first thought. Like, why is he calling yeah, Walt? Sure. And he called Walt. Sure. And we get we get a freaking amazing two-second scene with Walter and Jesse where he's just like, I get you, asshole. I get you, asshole. You know, and everything Walt says, Walt's like, Jesse, what are you talking about? He's like, listen, asshole. He doesn't even – he doesn't say any – doesn't call him anything but asshole. He's like, listen, asshole. I want to bring you down. I, I I thought about burning down your house. That That's too good for you. I'm not going to burn down your house. I'm going to get you where you really live, which what the hell does he mean by that? And we'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to get you where you really live and asshole and then hangs up on him and – we get two or three coughs of death from Walter, which are very interesting, very interesting, interestingly placed coughs right there. And that is our episode ending. The last 50 minutes of that episode, I thought, was brilliant. The first half of the episode with the two halves was mm-hmm. not my favorite thing that they've done in this season. It felt a little bit more like some of the uh, – well, it didn't feel like anything. It just felt – it felt a little quick. It felt a little rushed, a little like they missed a couple yeah, of it, beats it, that could have been in it, there. It, with the cramming of that that um, Marie scene and, you know, they, they took up a lot of time for some things and didn't yeah, exactly. Time did, for, others. for other things, yeah. And I feel like it was maybe a little bit missed time. But I understand when you're dealing with a lot of situations at once – and it's it's kind of tough to balance it, and you're trying to make this as interesting and off putting as possible, and having like crazy things happen, like having Hank and Jesse interactions and wanting to keep them true, which I appreciate that they did. They kept those interactions true. They didn't just make Jesse start to work with Hank. 
And then at the end of it all, we see Jesse walking down the street and Hank and Gomez pick him up, put him in the back of the car. They're like, what the hell, Pinkman? Blah, 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 blah. Pinkman. <laughs> We're going to get you. We're going to get you, Pinkman. It wasn't for those kids. <laughs> and Pinkman and Jesse is like, I have a plan. And and that's basically what we're left on. And it's interesting, and which leaves us at the end of the episode with our questions. A few questions here. The first question is, what is Jesse's plan? What could Jesse's plan, what's he mean, I'm going to get you where you live, where you really live? Oh, I forgot the one point of the episode. Excuse me, before I go any further. The one extra point of the episode is we get one more scene with Walt. Where we get Walt picking up his phone, dialing one nine hundred psychopath, and getting Todd on the phone, and we don't know who it is at first. At first, you kind of thought it was Saul, but uh, but you could tell at first, at, you could tell pretty much right after the initial hello hello that it was someone he hadn't talked to in a while. And it's Todd, and he says that we need, I may need your uncle to do another job, which potentially yeah. means the killing of Jesse Pinkman. It, um, which is the obvious choice of what he's talking about. And I don't think he's decided that it's Hank because he doesn't know that Hank and Jesse are working together yet. That's Walt is not a partial to that information yet. So back to our back to our questions. What is Jesse's plan? And what does Jesse's plan have to be that Hank would go with it? As much as Hank is off the rails, he's still, if especially with Gomez involved, any plan that Jesse has can't be illegal. It has to be. What does he mean, get him where he lives, where he really lives? Mm. I I honestly don't know. I mean, when he, you know, when he said, I have a plan, you know. Oh, my God. And it was like, I had a plan. Oh, my but, God. I just had a thought. Not that Jesse would be yeah. smart enough to realize it. But, again, I mentioned it earlier. Maybe he took the lottery ticket off the refrigerator and he figured out that it was some kind of code. Not that Jesse's that smart, but hit you where you live makes me think of the money. Makes me think, where, would he really, what does Walt really care about? He really cares about money and the business aspect. How could Jesse screw him uh, there? Jesse, by... Jesse's just not that bright. I know, I know, I'm reaching. I'm re I am reaching, right? Yeah. On the other hand, on the other hand, didn't, um... Didn't Huel go to the house when they were cleaning? And yes, he did. He was at the house, but Walter was there too, I believe. He was, but I'm just thinking, like in terms of that. I mean, yeah, I you mean, know, I, I guess he, I keep going back to Huel knows about the. But but it, uh, the thing is, how would Jesse get the? No, you're money. No, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. I I guess I'm just trying to think where. Like from the basis of what Jesse was saying, where is where Walter White really lives? He, he was very specific that this show, again, in a lot of ways, even in an episode like this that has a lot of stuff flying, there's nothing really that's there for no good reason. Why would what what does Jesse mean by that? And, and I guess the only thing I can think about is with money or with business, unless he's talking about his wife, but I couldn't see. Again, I couldn't. But Jesse wouldn't do that. Yeah, I don't. I, Jesse wouldn't do that. He wouldn't hurt his kid or his wife. He, as much as no. As much as we want to think of, think that Jesse's Jesse's not that type of person. He just wouldn't do that. And no. And Hank has to be going along with it to a certain extent, or giving Jesse a little bit of leeway. So, and but but Walt's not involved in the business anymore. So it leads me to believe it has something to do with money. But who? But who knows? Who knows? And. And then another question is, how are these Nazi assholes going to screw things up? Like, like, is Walt going to reach out to these guys to kill Jesse and then somehow change his mind and they're going to kill Jesse anyways? Are they going to make a mistake and kill Hank instead of Jesse? And, I mean, what? I don't trust these guys. I, I, I don't trust these guys at all. I, I, think, I think they're going to end up being a major loose end, them and the whole Todd situation. I just, I, I, I am... Yeah, maybe maybe I hate them because they're white. I, I mean, I because <laughs> they're white power. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, no, I I mean, I think they're, I think that whatever you try to use them for, they're going to have their own agenda or their own, you know, trying yeah. to make the 
their own decisions especially or whatever. especially at this point when we got that we got that cold open last week for a reason with with uh with Todd telling them about how amazing Mr. White is and now they know his name. You know, they he's not Eisenberg to these people. He's he's Walter White. It's Right. And and we, and what and the other questions I had is is what price will Skyler pay after this whole situation now after this episode Skyler as much as she as much as she wasn't before and a lot of, and I said I said in the in a couple episodes ago with her and the Marie scene with when uh, no it was last week last week that Skyler became truly involved in this episode she really showed an aggressive personality about wanting to kill Jesse and that that in this show is going to come back and bite her somewhere in karma way. I I mean, I'm more convinced now than ever that Skylar is going to die and it's going to happen sooner than later. I, I, I just have a weird feeling about that. I, she's, she has to pay some price and Walter has to pay some price. And I feel like they're his kids and her, Maybe sacrificial lamb somewhere along the way, but who knows? I, I think the only problem is that it makes the writing team just too much the like, bastards. Yeah, if no, they kill like, the kids, if they kill kids, yeah. No, I hear you. It's a, it's, yeah. a t- it's a tough thing it, to for rationalize this, for this show and the way it's structured. Killing those, you know, killing the two kids, killing Skyler who's been involved up to her, you know, eyeballs is one thing, but in, in killing the, 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 the children is a line is a line that would be a difficult line for them to cross. I hear what you're saying. I, yes. I do feel like with Skylar that like what you just said, that they've been very careful in the last couple of episodes to show her culpability and get us to a point where it seems like, they're going to make it okay for her to die. You know, okay to kill a woman on a television show, even though how sexist that might sound. But it's still harder to kill a woman, a female character than it is to kill a male character. It's it's more vicious. Mm-hmm. Spe- Except Lydia. Except Lydia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Lydia, if Lydia that, that would be celebrated. You know, it would be like, it would be like watching the Wicked, yeah. the Wicked Witch of the West melt and seeing that awkward woman face, face some, some sort of, like I was rooting for Mike to kill her. You know, and I, and I thought Mike said this line very mm-hmm. clearly. He goes, he goes, serves me right for being sexist. You know, and it's true. It's true. You can't treat adversaries in this game in a sexist level. Well, wasn't, yeah, but wasn't, didn't he also say at one point, um, now you're the one who's being sexist. She deserves to die as much as any man I know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, 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 so it was an interesting, Mike should have killed her and, and just dealt with like hit hiding her body and dealing with the kid, the kid finding yeah. nobody. Well, they did. You put her in the ba- in acid, and you yeah, know. yeah. And we never find her again. And the biggest question, yeah. and the, and the I guess the last question uh, that 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 I want to that I want to address here, we as we talked about, will Walter Junior ever find out? Will he ever find out that his dad cooks meth? Like we joked about it earlier. We joked about honestly, it. Honestly, I think you'd go to a production meeting. I think you could read Breaking Bad the book. And he's never gonna find <laughs> out. Do you think what we're talking about killing the characters? Do you think? I don't think they're gonna kill the baby. I highly doubt the baby's gonna die. But I could see Walter Jr. seeing an unnatural fate and dying without finding out. Because they have to address him somehow. This has to this has to be dealt with. Easy. Oh, this is Walter Jr. He's not very bright, but he's not dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we need we need some closure in this situation. I'm sorry. I I I I hate to say it. We 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 need some sort of Walter Jr. Need there needs to be an end to this Walter Jr. situation. There needs to. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I I mean I agree that that they need to. They they. There needs to be some kind of, you know, sort of tie up this massive loose end that he's become. Yeah. Um, and maybe you do kill him, but the thing is, 
if you're punishing Walt, uh, Walt, yeah, Walt, um, if you're punishing Walt, you punish him really badly, really badly by punish, by killing Skyler. You punish him horrifically, or so I'm told, <laughs> um, that, that apparently there are some parents who have a bond with their children. And, and so you would punish him horrifically by killing his son. That that would be a, a much worse, whether he quote unquote deserves it because of what he's done to suffer that way. No, a- absolutely. You know, and again, the kids aren't guilty. Yeah, they are. Skyler's guilty. Skyler's guilty. No, she is. She is. And it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see dramatically where the show decides to take Walter paying some sort of penance for all of his crimes. And I do feel like it will be more punishment for him to face all these things happening to the other people he cares about around him and being left alone. And it seems like that's yeah. the direction they're going, but I'm still not convinced that – the flash forwards that we've seen aren't some sort of misdirection on some on some ways. We we I, I personally have been taking those for in the things that happen them for face value of what we're seeing in those scenes. But it, it it's not unlike this show to to uh, to use a little bit misdirection. We do have a couple of te- right. well, we do have a couple of uh, texts here. So uh, uh, our friend a friend named uh, Dylan says. I really hate that I can't just marathon Breaking Bad right now. I'm so damn nosy, and I need the answers now. Yes, we need the answers I, now, too. When they ran 5-9, I was like, okay, Netflix can put the rest of them on. Yeah, absolutely. We we need it. We need it. Um, uh, the, t- t- a couple more. On the last season, on, this is the last season, but I can't help but be distracted with how poorly Walt's glasses fit behind his ears. I, I honestly never noticed that. But are you serious? It's true, though. They, yeah, he's like always having a. They, yeah, they actually don't fit very well. Interesting, interesting. And maybe I was thinking maybe they're trying to convey that you know he's lost weight because of the can you know part yeah. of the, the gaunt look from the cancer. Or maybe the and our and our last little um, last text message is what I find fascinating about Cranston's performance as Walter White is how good he is at portraying both a great and a terrible liar. Well, you know, I agree I agree with you. I yeah, d- yeah, yeah. I and I which, do, had- which we both mentioned that I do I yeah. I don't want to take anything away from Cranston's performance as we were talking about the first half of this episode. I feel like in production and how it was edited together, I felt like some scenes didn't run long enough. I felt like they made they made the the Walter lying to his family scene a little bit goofy and and him play in him obviously lying and and I think he, I think Cranston played it well. I just think in execution of the way the scene was written, it was just flawed, and it was just a little, I guess, unnecessary. But he does go from playing one of the most brilliant liars I've ever seen anywhere, you know. Yeah, to to, to play playing a a perfect a perfect calculating madman, and and that's what it. And that's another connection that to like last week's episode in in the conf- confessions video he plays he knows how to switch from fragile scared early on chemistry teacher Walter White to Eisenberg in a snap of a hat anyway he's at complete control of his faculties of emotional manipulation which is why I think. He really believes what he says to Junior when he says that he doesn't think this cancer is going to beat him, that he thinks he can beat it again. And, real, and, and again, leads me more to believe that the information he's gotten from the doctors has been more positive because we have yet to hear, as far as we know, the truth about anything. Obviously, oh, ouch. Obviously, as time goes on, I'm more believing that, uh, that he lied to Hank about dying in six months. He's definitely not – it does definitely does not look like he's dying in six months. That looks like that was a pile of crap. No. Yeah. I mean we, we, know, no, we, we know he's alive in more than six months, but it's even more so looking like a pile of crap these days. <laughs> but, yeah. Which but, 
will be interesting to see how it all put, how yeah. they get us there in four episodes. In four episodes. So so here we are right now at the at the halfway point, at the end of the halfway point of of the last part of the season of Breaking Bad. This was there's four we we're four episodes in and we have four episodes left. I'm I'm really excited. I can't wait for these four episodes. I'm hyped up. This episode, if I'm completely honest, if I had to rank all the episodes for season five so far so far, this would probably easily be my least favorite of all of them. Not to say it was a bad episode in any way, shape, or form, but if I'm being extra critical, uh I feel like the first half of the episode was off balance by the second half and the first half was was the stakes didn't feel as high in the first half as it got amped up in the second half and I think part of that was that we were seeing some out of time experience in Breaking Bad, you know, the two parallel storylines. So we got the two people, you know, what's Walt doing? What's Jesse doing? You know, what's Hank doing? thing and it it was needed. I believe this episode was we definitely needed a let get stuff moving things happen not everything's a deep moment type scene but we got what may be some of my favorite moments of the season so far in this episode with the Hank Jesse interactions and Jesse being Mm -hmm. in absolute top form and Aaron Paul some scenes from this episode could be up for consideration for award nomination and I think he him Hank and what and Brian Cranston they all deserve freaking awards for the way they're playing these scenes but I do want to before we go talk a little bit just for a couple more seconds about Hank's emotional state and how much of an idiot he is and how this is affecting his case he pushed Jesse in all the wrong possible ways he doesn't respect Jesse Mm -hmm. he doesn't understand in the same way he didn't respect Skylar and he's trying to just push both of them to try to get what he wants Hank needs to step back and think do you think and I guess this is just my final question for you do you think that Hank has that potential in him, or is he a lost cause? He is this rabid dog that's out of control and doing everything to pretty much let Walter win because he's thinking too emotionally. It, can Hank? He's, can Hank bring down Walter down? He's you know he's Captain Ahab at this point. Yeah, yeah. Can't let it go. And this, I mean, this sort of goes goes to uh, something I, I had wanted to say just for a close. I mean, this episode was, you know, it got through a lot of things that it needed to. It had some things that didn't really work out, like, the you know, the Marie and her doctor thing. Yep. But you see why they did it, and it, in another episode, another time, it would have been good. You know, this, it, uh, and then when we start talking about Hank, all of a sudden we, you know, we're, we're not talking about Brian Cranston does this or, or you know, um, R.J. Mitty does this. We're talking about Hank the character again. Yeah, no, absolutely. So there were segments here that you know drew us back to the character, and 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 he he needs to do anything because what happened is the most important line that came out of that garage was. It's been my own brother-in-law all this, you know, all this time. Mm-hmm. He has been completely undermined. Everything he has been in his life has been completely undermined, and he needs this in his blood. Yeah, he it he he was completely, and that's why he can't be on the case. Yeah, and that's why he'll never be clear-minded. I I agree with you 100. percent He is out of control. This person that he completely underestimated with underestimated and he in some ways helped make you know he's he helped mm-hmm. the super villain be created here and and operated under his nose this whole time in a situation that as everyone said watching it would be obvious to anybody once the school supplies were stolen it would be obvious that walter should be a you know a potential suspect and it's yeah, Hank. It, Hank needs to get off the case and give this to other people and just be an advisor or retire, yeah. retire with a great pension and get the hell out of there and be an advisor. Or, or take some time off. 
and yeah. let this whole thing settle and go, you know, go back to work if you want. Yeah. So Hank, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, Hank, or, or transfer to another office. Yeah. So Hank, if you need to stay on either of our couches, you're welcome to come over, buddy. But just get out of, yeah, get out of, the, get out of the situation. But Time every, to get out of Dodge. Yeah, get the hell out of Dodge. So everybody, thank you very much for listening to this week's Breaking Bad yes, podcast. Thank you. Thank Rabid Dog. You can check out any of the podcasts for uh, Breaking Bad and any other Issues Program stuff at IssuesProgram.com. Please subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, Phil the Issues Guy. Call in 24 hours a day, seven days a week with your comments, questions, texts, whatever. Or text in at 781-990-8509. Or email me to theissuesguy at gmail.com. Next week, we will not be live, but we will be on on uh, on Monday or Tuesday afternoon. We'll figure out what works better, and uh, and we will be talking about the next episode. And then it'll, there'll only be three episodes left, and then we have oh oh my god, and then oh it's get it's getting crazy. I'm getting I'm getting nervous. I'm getting scared. I want to know how this Walter White situation ends. Gotti, I will talk to you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Night, everyone. Thanks. Night, baby.